Right. Well, it's really the third day of the lesson. And, and a lot of times when we have a third day, it's uh, intentional. It's not because, uh, again, we don't have anything else to do, but it's, it was intentionally that we could kind of take it easy and make sure that uh, you're picking up. Today is going to feel a little bit more like a chance to practice some things. Now, I'm not going to hand you a piece of paper. We're going to practice them through some examples. But um, instead of saying, here, start the assignment, we kind of have a third day, again, where we can really cement this and get it off to a great start. Here's something. I would put in your notes like an example, but I want you to try it. Can you find the limit without a calculator? After two days of some examples and ideas, could you find the limit of that without a calculator? So we got x squared, or we got the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus 10x plus 25 all over x minus 5. Now I can understand if maybe initially you're frozen. We want you to hopefully not be frozen the whole time. Think about what you could do. Maybe look back at some examples. You might find one that is similar. But what could you do besides just graphing it? Now, if you have not plugged in 5 yet, let me kind of push you in the right direction. You should. You should plug in 5. It's at least a start. Now, after you plug in 5, you actually should come to a little bit of a roadblock, a little bit of a dead end. And really, you just need to turn around and try something else. This is all part of the process, though. So if, when you plug in 5, you end up getting 0 over 0. Okay, But it's just kind of like a shoot. It doesn't tell me anything. It's an indeterminate. I saw some of you write... Okay, now, just to be clear, that doesn't mean that there's no limit. It doesn't mean that the limit is zero. It doesn't mean it does not exist. It doesn't really mean anything except to try something else. Now, keep trying, but again, I want to kind of nudge you in the right direction. Look at that x squared minus 10x plus 25 and kind of look at it through your algebra glasses. Go ahead, put on your algebra glasses and... <laughs> You know, what does x squared minus 10x plus 25 kind of make you want to do? You know, what does it make you want to do? Factor. Factor. Good, good. This is... A lot of good stuff here. This is how you approach this type of problem. I guess we're trying to get you to the point that you are confident that that answer is right. Sometimes people get zero and they feel like it can't be right, but zero is just an intended height. And so once you factor this correctly to x minus 5, x minus 5, all over x minus 5, Got x minus 5s everywhere. Okay, you end up 
you end up canceling out the problem. The problem was really that I ended up with a zero in the top and bottom, but I cancel out the problem. And of course, you end up with just a zero when you plug in five. Okay, now that's your limit. Definitely, there'll be plenty of problems where it's just like find the limit. As your teacher here, I want to make sure you keep making a connection. And a lot of times, the connection is the graph. Okay, now. Here's something a little more from algebra. Your graph, do you realize, is really just this. Now, when we say this, we mean y equals x minus 5. Well, you graphed y equals x minus 5 back in junior high. It's a diagonal line. Okay? There's just one thing about this diagonal line. It's got a hole in it. And the hole is occurring at the common factor. What I mean is the hole is occurring at x equals 5. So at x equals 5, we can also sort of affirm that there was a hole in the graph which ended up being our limit of y equals 0. Now, that's a little algebra. I'm not saying that you have to be perfect with that, but you should start to realize that that's what's going on. Again, when these cancel out, there's a hole in the graph at 5. And that's really what you found. You found that intended y value right there, which happens to be an x-intercept. Again, it happens to be an x-intercept. Yesterday, we talked about, they're called one-sided limits. I didn't actually use that terminology, but a one-sided limit is when you have a limit coming in from the left, I got to make sure I put the correct hand up, or coming in from the right, coming in from those directions. Okay, so we have a left and right hand limit. I want to show you a little video, okay, that same thing, this is not a great time to get up and leave because it's supposed to help reinforce some things. It's also going to tell you something new, and you might laugh a little bit too. Now you have some idea of what a limit is, and we need to talk about when does a limit exist. To illustrate my point before we get started, let's set up an example. Let's say you and a friend are going to meet for dinner, and you're meeting at a diner that's centrally located between the two of you. If you live east of the diner, and your friend lives west of the diner, and you both want to drive to meet there, ideally, the roads which lead to the diner will lead you to the same place. If you travel towards the diner from the right, or east, and they travel towards the diner from the left, you should meet up in the same place. Mathematically, this is basically what a limit is. A limit exists if you travel along a function from the left side and from the right side towards some specific value of x. As long as that function meets in the middle, as long as you arrive at the diner, as long as the heights from the right and the left are the same, then the limit exists. Now, just I, I want to repeat almost just what he said because it was really important. Did you hear it? As long as, actually, how did he say it? <laughs> as long as the height you come, the height you arrive at from the right and from the left is the same, then the limit exists. Okay, now we've actually been doing that for the last couple days, but now we more officially say it that again, as long as the height that you arrive at from the right and from the left is the same, then the limit exists. Now it's time to get down to the brass tacks and look at this mathematically. Take a look at the graph of this function f of x. Visually, you can see that it's got a break in it at x equals 4. So, if we travel towards 4 from the right, we will arrive at a height of 2. However, if you travel towards 4 from the left, you will arrive at a height of 1. This means that no limit exists for f at x equals 4. Let's go back to our diner metaphor for just a second. Notice that as I'm traveling along the road from the right, I end up at a height of 2. But if you travel along the road from the left, you end up at a height of 1. 
These heights don't match. We won't both arrive at the diner, and no limit exists. We call the height at which we arrive from the right the right-hand limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right. And we denote this with a little plus sign in our limit symbol. Our height that we arrive at from the left is called the left-hand limit of f of x as x approaches 4, and it is denoted with a little negative symbol. Mathematically, in order for a limit to exist, both the right and the left-hand limits must be equal. Mathematically, for a limit to exist. Now, when we say the limit to exist, we're talking about the general limit, the overall limit. Okay, but the left and the right have to be equal. We're going to end up writing that down, but it never hurts to hear it and see it. Now let's change this function just a little bit. This new function, we'll call g of x, does possess a limit. Can you see why that's the case? It's because the function no longer has a break at 4. Now, there's something to be said here. The previous function did not have a limit at 4. It did have a limit at many other points. For example, a limit existed at 1, at 2, at 5, at 0. All these x values showed locations where the graph did not break. In essence, a graph will not possess a limit if it breaks at the given x value. That's why our new function does possess a limit at x equals 4. Now, let's go back to our diner example one last time. Let's say we're traveling towards the diner. We both arrive at the same location, but the diner isn't there. Maybe it's caught fire or something. Does that mean the limit doesn't exist? The truth is, the limit will exist even if the diner's not there, because you still arrive at the same place. In other words, mathematically, a limit can still exist if your destination is a hole in the graph, because it doesn't matter whether or not the point is actually there. What matters is that you arrived at that point, coming from the right side and the left side. In conclusion, a limit exists on a graph if you arrive at the same height coming from both the right and the left side of the given x value. I'll say something important. And let me sort of affirm that it is. And I encourage you to uh, get this idea that the general limit exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. Now we're going to write this down with some like notation. But if you also want to write it down with like some words, but I really want you to understand the notation. It kind of shows in just a couple days how much you're growing here. So the limit as x approaches c, it's always of something. It has to be of like a function. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. It exists. If you have two criteria, as it says up here, the limit from the right. Now we can write this with some notation. So the limit from the right would be that the limit as x approaches c with a little plus sign. So that's the right hand limit. Limit from the left, um, that would be the limit as x approaches c with a little negative sign. And of course, all we have to do is make them, well, make them equal. Okay, now, this on one level, you might be looking at this saying, yeah, Ms. Taylor. Got this because it's actually how we've been doing the problem since day one. We're just making it official, and I want you to kind of be a believer. I want you to believe that this is always the case. The limit will exist. Now, when we say the limit exists, we're talking about like the overall limit, the general limit. And 
all we have to have is the right hand limit between the left hand limit. And of course, even back to the problem we did at the beginning of the period, that definitely is the case because the right hand limit and the left hand limit both were zero. They were both zero. So that's why the overall limit is also zero. This statement will be true like for the rest of the chapter. We'll get into some kind of funky stuff. We'll get into some other scenarios, and I hope that you'll kind of go back to this to always answer the question: Does a limit exist? If the right equals the left, the answer is always yes. Questions? Just thoughts? Okay. Let me. zigzagging. It's got some open and closed circles. And make sure that you get this point that's kind of just floating up here and x equals 2. So take a look at it. Jot it down if you want to. I'm going to ask you some limit questions. Maybe you'll discover something new through this. Maybe you'll just affirm that you're doing a good job so far with the beginnings of limits. But just kind of take a look at the question. I'm going to put them up on the screen. You got to do what you want with that. You can just look at them. You can write them down. I hope that you try to answer them. So this question kind of comes in two. Got the limit as x approaches zero with a little plus sign, and then we got the limit as just x approaches zero. already you're like, oh man, this seems a little different, or what do I do in this case? Good, you're realizing that I'm trying to get you to take what you've learned and continue to apply it to new things. That's what your assignments will be like. You guys will you'll see things that 
aren't exactly what we did in class, but you'll be able to apply. But that's why we're talking a little more here. Now, first of all, are we just like looking at the right place? As x approaches zero from the right, you're actually doing this. Okay, if we had a little car moving this way. Now, I won't ever say this again, but if it's crossed your mind, as you approach from the right, you're actually moving left. All right, again, I'm not gonna ever say that again, but it's true. I just don't want to confuse. So we're coming in from the right, and geez, what intended height am I approaching? Yeah, one, one. Now, that's the right-hand limit. The second limit up there is what we would call the overall limit. Now, if you're like, Mr. Chandler, you said that uh, the overall limit is if the right is equal to the left. Good, you were listening. Okay, the problem with this, and I don't know if it's really a problem, but the, the reality of this is I don't have a left-hand limit. I don't have a left-hand limit to compare it to. So I can't say that the left-hand limit is different. Are you tracking? I don't have a left-hand limit to compare it to. So I can't say it's different. Now I also can't say it's the same. But what I can do is I can modify this definition, and in reality, since there isn't something to compare it to, that the overall limit has to be the right-hand limit. Again, just because there's no left-hand limit to, to speak of. In other words, to say that it's different. So it is equal to one. I guess what we want to do in this case is we want to be careful about what this is saying understand that there is still an overall limit, and again, that's because that's the only direction I can approach. Okay. It's all right. It's all right that there's nothing over here. I just need to be able to approach on what I've given about these three limit statements. Limit as x approaches 1. Make sure you see the little negative sign. Limit as x approaches 1, the little plus sign. The limit as x approaches 1, with no sign. Limit as x approaches 1 with the little negative sign. That's your intended height. So that'd be why you had a 0. About approaches 1 with a little positive sign. So that would be this intended height, which is 1. So the overall limit. Okay, that's a perfect example, but it does not exist. Definitely the left and right hand limits are different, so the overall limit does not exist. By the way, it doesn't matter that this is closed in. It doesn't matter that this is open for any of those three answers. Okay, all that matters is that the two heights are different. Let's keep going. It's kind of nice to do this high before lunch. There's three more.
feel like that you're approaching two. X approaches two. Okay, so both of my fingers are approaching the same height, which is the left and right hand limit, which is one. Okay, well, that means that the overall limit is also one. Trust it, if the left and right are the same, then there's a one. Now, if you're like, what's up with this point out here? And I think a classmate asked about that the other day. What's up with this point? It's really something different, which someday we'll use, but it's different. It's the value. It's f of 2. It's the, it's the value of the function. Why is it up there? Just so we can have something different to talk about and realize that it's a different answer. Okay, so the value is 2, but the limit is 1. Someday what we'll do is we'll make them the same. And we'll talk about that. Someday we'll make them the same. And it's really a whole separate question. It's a whole separate question because it's the value. One more. I kind of want you to realize that if I just give you or ask you for the limit as x approaches 3, well, That implies something. That implies. Well, it implies that I need to do something with both of them. Now, it sounds like you already did something with both of them. What did you do? What did you do with the left and right hand limit? Pardon? Yeah. So, and just, just to be clear, you have to find the left and right hand limit, you have to compare them, and you're exactly right, Nate, they are the same. Now, since they're the same, I can say two. Sometimes kids are like, uh-oh, what about the left and right hand limit? They're implied by this problem. You have to find them, but the answer is just one answer. It's the limit. It's the overall limit. And, yeah, of course, it's We'll do a little bit more this after lunch and I actually have like uh, an example to show you. Well, I'll show you, but there'll be an example we'll do.